it's extremely efficient. There's no conversion losses or anything. The DC power is just flowing straight out of the battery through the wires and into your router. Welcome to my uh, storage slash utility closet. In today's video, I want to uh, demonstrate uh, two ways that uh, you can power your wireless router either off-grid more efficiently or uh, during a power outage. What we're going to do is uh, first we're going to plug this in to this power station right here. This is the Anchor Solix C1000. We're going to plug it into the AC power and uh, just get a bench mark for how much time this uh, router will run for. And then I'm going to show you two ways to actually power this uh, via DC power and uh, avoid a bunch of conversion losses. Okay, we have our router plugged in. Uh, you can see that uh, right here, it's AC. So the Anchor Solix C1000 is powering the internet. Um, it's a very low draw, so it doesn't, it's not even registering on here that it's uh, drawing any power. But uh, anyway, we are going to just kind of keep tabs on it here. It's 1121 in the morning. We're going to just let it run here, see how long it lasts plugged in here, just uh, direct. And, uh, and then we'll uh, do the DC uh, tests. Okay, it is the next day at 11.28, so just over 24 hours later. And uh, with the uh, router plugged into the AC outlet, uh, we've got 51% remaining. So running just the router off the Anchor Solix C1000 on AC uh, should give you about 48-ish hours of runtime. Okay, now I want to show you how I can power this router using uh, DC power, which should be much more efficient than running an inverter that has losses, converting the power that's already DC in the battery to alternating current, AC, and then converting it back through this brick to DC power. The reason uh, we know that is, well, most things that have bricks like this are DC power. And uh, I don't know if you can see or not, but uh, if you look for the output rating on the power brick here, it says 12 volts, two amps is uh, what this is rated for. So it just so happens that this power station has a 12 volt outlet. It comes with a cable like this that uh, happen is usually used to charge the power station, but I'm going to use it to plug in to the power station. That gives us an XT60 connector on the end right there. And then I just got some extremely inexpensive um, wires here from Amazon. Uh, this is this plugs into an XT60 connector. And then this is a 5521 barrel plug, which happens to match that of the one in plugged into the router here. So we should be able to just plug our adapter in like that and get our 12 volt uh, cable plugged in like that. And then we should be able to just connect these two together. And then we should be able to just turn on the 12 volt DC power. And look at that. The uh, router has booted right up. Now we're going to let this run for 24 hours now. We'll be able to uh, see if there's any improvement as far as how long this uh, power station can run this and then I'm going to show you an even more efficient way to power your router for an extended period of time. And as you can see we're starting out at 100% and it's 1151 in the morning. So we'll be back uh, in 24 hours and uh, see if uh, this is any higher than 51% which were the results from the last AC power test. Okay we are actually a little past the 24 hour mark. But uh, check it out, 82% uh, is all we've drawn down to using the DC plug to direct power this. So 
that's only 20%, uh, le actually less than 20%, 18% of the battery capacity used, a little longer than 24 hour time, as opposed to 50%. So a substantial savings if you're just uh, needing to power the internet for a prolonged period of time and uh, don't have use for any of the you know AC inverter uh, stuff. So if you have a really low wattage uh, appliance like this router right here, it's substantially more efficient to power directly off DC as opposed to all the conversion losses of going to AC and then back to DC uh, just to power something. You know, right here it's saying it's pulling about six watts is all this uh, particular router is pulling. So let me show you an even more efficient way than to power this uh, with something that's even more, less expensive than a power station. This is a great solution. If you have a power station, I love these things. They're extremely handy. Let me show you an even uh, cheaper solution to uh, keep a 12 volt uh, appliance like this going for an even longer period of time. Okay, here's a uh, way number three. This is probably going to be the most efficient and uh, the longest running and cheapest uh, solution if you want something just dedicated to run this uh, for extended periods of time. Uh, this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So it has a capacity of 1,280 watt hours. So actually a little more capacity than uh, the power station that we were using. So we need to factor that in uh, in our tests. As you can see here, we're at a 100% state of charge. And I think that's going to make this even more efficient is because it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. Its voltage stays very consistent throughout the entire discharge until the very end when it drops. So we're going to get a very nice feed of power into this router for pretty much the entire lifespan of this battery and we don't have any conversion losses. The power station that we had here a minute ago uh, has some conversion losses even still because it's a regulated 12 volt output. And uh, this is unregulated, it's just straight from the battery, so we have zero loss regulating the voltage from the battery here. Extremely easy, once again, I've ju I just took some uh, excess wire and uh, we've got the uh, positive uh, lead going to the positive side, the negative lead going to the negative side right here. And then I've just put an XT60 connector on the end very simply. And I can just use the same connector I used last time. And uh, I should be able to just uh, take these, connect them together. And we should see lights on the router, indeed. And as you can see, here's the power cord, trace it, and uh, there we go, uh, go into the battery. So anyway, we will come back uh, here in about uh, 24 hours time again and uh, see where this is at. Uh, currently, we're at a 100% state of charge and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay, it is now uh, the next day, 24 hours later, 12.23 p.m. and uh, 99.75 amp hours. This is saying 100% uh, state of charge. That's the app for this uh, smart battery. The uh, screen here, it's also still saying it's 100% state of charge. I think that might be slightly skewed just because this is such a small load. Um, it might not be triggering the uh, shunt uh, built into here. But uh, let's just take worst case scenario. We know that uh, this was pulling approximately six watts from the uh, other power station. And so if we just take six times that by 24, that means it's only used 144 watt hours. And this battery has is 1,280 watt hours. So you, we haven't even started to take away the any from the 1000 we're, we're still working on the the hundreds here and that's the the power of direct powering from the battery is it's extremely efficient there's no conversion losses or anything the dc power is just flowing straight out of the battery through the wires and into your router so this is definitely the ultimate most efficient longest term setup for something like this so pay attention to uh, different things uh, throughout your house. Uh, you'd be surprised, I think, how many things 
could probably run directly off 12 volt power. And so in a prolonged uh, power outage or a grid down situation, uh, to power those devices that need to be on 24 seven, rather than just burning up power in conversion, uh, you could potentially tap into the power of uh, DC either direct from a battery like this or from a power station as I showed you before. So anyway, uh, be sure to like and subscribe uh, if you like these kinds of uh, tips and tricks. And uh, we'll catch you next time.